Welcome to One Life Visits with me, your host, Dr. Trey Ahia. We have been talking about the legacy of slavery and how it impacts African Americans and those that are around us today. And we've been looking at how the dehumanization of individuals can be very debilitating for communities in all different aspects of life. How we eat, how we think, how others approach us as well. And we even have looked at the psychological impact of this with post-traumatic slave syndrome is what we've been talking about these last few visits. So this week or this visit, we have a guest host. We have Miss Tarika Anderson Williams with us. And this young lady is an incredible being. I had the opportunity to meet her, meet her and I thought that she would be an excellent co-visitor with me. <laughs> Hello. Tarika. Hi. How are you? I am well, how are you? Great. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yes. Can you tell our audience a little bit about you? Well, I am the tantalizing, the tenacious, and the ever teachable Tarika Anderson Williams. And I'm just happy to be here. Excellent. I am a independent beauty consultant with Mary Kay. And it has allowed me and afforded me to be able to have a lifestyle to take care of my son and the flexibility to go and come as I please. Wow. It is awesome. Wow. Well, that is excellent. That's good information for us to, to take in. And then a little further, we want to find out how we could uh, connect with you as well. How our audience can connect with you. Notice she said the T's. Her name is T. Mine is a T, right? So the T's connect. Terrific. Tantalizing. That's us, right? <laughs> That's right. Yes. So are you aware of our topic, um, the legacy of slavery that we've been visiting about these last few sessions? Yes, yes. Oh, there's the look. Okay. So um, for me, just like the social and physical legacies and um, being recognized in the way that we're affected in our, um, sorry, you got, see, Working from home, I'm able to have my baby and he's here helping, so he thinks. Um, <laughs> it's recognized in the persistent race-based inequalities that we see in our healthcare, um, in our workforce, and just in our everyday social activities. Yes, yes. That, that environmental piece of this legacy of slavery has been so profound. And like you were saying about the social impacts that it has had on individuals at large as our health is uh, impaired. And, you know, just the loss of life in this culture has been outstanding. And it actually it doesn't matter what our age range or what our gender is. They're killing mm -hmm. our men, they're killing our boys, uncles, you know, fathers, they're killing women. You know, and the they are those Caucasian counterparts. Some are are are, uh, are in uh, uniforms, and others are just plain clothes people that just do not like us or that are afraid of us for some strange reason. Yet they would like everything we have: our hair, our skin color, you know, the size of our lips. So certainly, that legacy of slavery has definitely impacted us. So yep. when when we think about how this could ever change, you know, because slavery has been a legal institution forever. You know, they made it a law so that it would be okay for them to mistreat yeah. another human of brown skin that they brought over here. It's interesting. They brought us here. So do you have any ideas you think you could share with our audience about how uh, African-Americans can change this climate of ill treatment um, as we know, it's <laughs> our culture is a culture of love, a culture of inclusion, a culture of taking care of and looking after one another. So yeah. even though we've been through all of this trauma and the legacy of slavery still affects us today, all that we know is to love. So continue to love and show others that it doesn't have to be this way. Mm, okay, yes. 
and we can you know, we can exist together. We can, yeah. After after some work has to be done because once right. we fit, once we finish this, once I finish this piece about the legacy of slavery, then I'm going to delve into what can really be done to make the change to uh, to really affect the masses, not just our ethnicity, but those other ones, you know, of Caucasian and European descent. There are others from Latin descent that certainly don't look at us. Uh, they look at us in a disparaging manner as well. So that comes a couple of visits down the road. But yeah, I appreciate that you were saying that we can all get along, but some things have to change first. Definitely. So what have you experienced then that has impacted your life when we talk about this legacy of slavery in modern times? What has have you experienced in those regards? Um, for whatever reason, the legacy of slavery in the present time, um, it displays itself in the role of, of, um, <laughs> uh, sorry. That's all right. The, the word I'm looking for. Um, oh my goodness. When you're working is, on your jobs, I think you were telling me a while ago, something about. Yes, yeah, working on your jobs and the word I want to use. What is the word? <laughs> Ah, I love it. <laughs> oh, God. Because <laughs> I haven't experienced much of it. So what is the word? And what, But why haven't you? Talk to us about why you haven't. When you were younger, what was it like then? <laughs> so, I mean, my parents took, their, took the best um, route that they could to have us be around different ethnicities, mm -hmm. different... Um, Wow, food and ethnicities yeah, and different culture. things, Whoa. cultures, and experience different things. So yes. we were able to see how different cultures right. act or portray mm -hmm. themselves. And then in turn, how we should act in different scenarios because in one area, this might be okay. And in another area, this is not okay. So those things we were able to learn and develop. And so, yeah. Okay. So from a child, your parents taught you. Discrimination. That's the word. That's the <laughs> they taught you not to discriminate and you've been subject of discrimination in your adulthood. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Oh, we, I knew it would come to you. And you're, oh, you're, you're not even that old. How are you forgetting these words? Because <laughs> I don't have to use it often. Okay, I hear you. Okay. I hear you. Oh, goodness. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, so I appreciate that. So now, now, so where are you now when you talk about transitioning from that work world that was discriminatory? So now we're all. In this, how do you make a um, I've That I, propelled me to go into a world of um, my own, being your own boss, being your own leader, and developing uh, a work style and work team that works for you. And what is that? It is called Mary Kay. Oh, okay. Mary Kay has propelled you. Why did Mary Kay propel you? There's other things that you could have. What was it about Mary Kay? Established back in September of 1963 by Mary Kay herself in order to allow women to have a platform to be financially independent, to empower themselves, to be the women that they know that they can be. Um, back then at that time, the workforce for women wasn't all that great. So the men dominated the workforce and skills that women had were looked over, you know, jobs given to men over the women who may have been very well capable and qualified. But since you're a woman, we're going to take this man over you. So she developed that platform for that reason. Okay. And with that platform, Mine. you're able to do so much. Wow. So what have you done? Are you almost to the car yet? <laughs> so yeah, um, 
with the platform, you're able to work it how you want to work it. So if you just need a couple extra hundred dollars to supplement your income, great. But if you want to make a career out of it, that can be done as well. So I have taken the career path and yes, I'm working towards my first car. And hopefully within the next couple months, we will have our Chevy Malibu. Wonderful. Congratulations. What are some of the things behind you that you could share with us? Um, so we have some of our skincare items, the, um, the men's skincare line, oh. and we have a line called Naturally, and everything in that line basically is for a sensitive skin person or person who doesn't like the additives and the chemicals. It's paraben free. Um, we have one of our um, exclusive sets that we had for a little bit with the mini hand creams. There's three hand creams in there. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. And I'm sure there's so much more to that. Uh, I remember decades ago that it cost like hundreds of dollars to participate or to start in that program. Is it still yes. very costly now? Is it very costly? No, Mary Kay wants to empower you and motivate you to go ahead and get started. So they do offer two entry um, options at this time. And one of them we call, and I like to call the $30 holla. Oh. So for $30, you could join the company. Wow, that's excellent. And how would folks get in contact with you then? You can reach me by telephone, 239-645-9738. You can reach me by email. My first name, Tarika, T-E-R-I-K-A, the number one, period. My last name, Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, www.maryk.com backslash my first name, Tarika, T-E-R-I-K-A. Awesome. Wow. You know, we're out of time. <laughs> Today's visitor, Miss Terica, is waiting to hear from you. Like, share, subscribe to One Life Visits. Today's episode of One Life's Visits was brought to you by Big Daddy Beard Gaming Promotions, live gaming, channel, and business promotions, the Debate Table Podcast, the Gamer's Gamer, Big Daddy Beard Promotions. <laughs>